His brother is a member of Congress, and he thinks his brother needs to be stopped. Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Welcome back. So one of the guys who helped organize, actual organized, the so-called Stop the Steal, which is predicated on the assumption that the election results is reported by our news media and by the secretaries of state of, uh, for example, the Republican Secretary of State of Arizona, the Republican Secretary of State of Georgia, that those results were all lies and that Donald Trump, in fact, won the election and it was being stolen from him, right? The guy, one of the guys who, who helped organize this rally that turned into the attack on the Capitol was a congressman from Arizona. His name is Paul Gosar. He's a Republican representing the 4th District of Arizona. All, to the best of my knowledge, all of his siblings, brothers and sisters, have uh, come out and basically condemned him. And uh, one of them is on the line with us right now, David Gosar. Uh, David is a, uh, he's a brother of Paul Gosar. He is a practicing attorney. Um, and uh, David, welcome to the program. What, uh, you know, coming out against one's sibling is a pretty severe step. What provoked you and your uh, and your uh, other siblings, your your brothers and sisters, uh, to 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 come out and make these kinds of statements? That that uh, well, and, and for that matter, you know, recap for our listeners and viewers what those statements are. Uh, thanks for having me on today, Tom. Uh, I watch your program about every day on YouTube, and I get so much out of it. Uh, well, thank you, David. Well, it was it wasn't an easy uh, decision to make. Um, We've been actively uh, opposing him for the last couple of years now. Um, you know, he's been in Congress since about 2010, and you know, we we endured a lot. He has taken just unbelievably extreme positions over the years. Uh, finally, got to the point in 2017 where you know he appeared on Vice News with just some crazy you know, anti-Semitic uh, remarks about how George Soros was possibly behind the Charlottesville rally and, you know, that George Soros is a 10-year-old boy, you know, uh, collaborated with the Nazis to turn in his own people, stuff like this. You know, he, previous to that, he was down at the Cliven, uh, let me tell you about the Negro Bundy's uh, ranch, you know, you know, participating in that insurrection. Um, against the government, and there's so much he's been involved in that it, you know we'd have to have a you know at least 15 minutes just to even recount that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what started it all. Um, but you know we've come out again, you know, because of his participation in this insurrection, which he was instrumental in. Uh, he was you know involved in the stop the steal rallies he organized the rallies down in Arizona which resulted in death threats to the secretary of state her house being surrounded um, he was involved with Ali Alexander the principal person behind the uh, mob rally at the Capitol um, he's been spreading lies ever since on social media or wherever he can, Fox News. Uh, he, uh, he objected to the certification. In fact, he was on the House floor, you know, when the uh, mob started to storm the Capitol, um, objecting to it. And then he, even after it was all said and done, he voted uh, against certifying the election. Um, so he's been as much involved in this as anybody. And the last thing, Tom, um, you know, on January 6th, the day of the insurrection, he tweeted out these exact words uh, with a picture of the mob. Biden should concede. I want his concession on my desk tomorrow morning. Don't make me come over there. Hmm. Um, we're talking with David Gosar, the bro brother of Congressman Paul Gosar, who uh, represents the 4th District of Arizona. You're an attorney. Is your brother, the congressman, a, an attorney? No, he's not, Tom. He's a, a retired dentist. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you think he, you know, I, I, I generally try to avoid uh, mind reading other people's motivations, but you're this guy's brother. Why is he doing this? Is this his moment in the sun and he's willing to sacrifice his country for, you know, fame and fortune? Or is this 
uh, you know, does he have deeply held beliefs that, you know, America should be a whites only country and and uh, Jews and blacks and, and everybody else should just, you know, get the hell out or, or learn their place or that kind of thing. I mean, the, that 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 seems to be the the rhetorical backbone of a lot of these movements that he has aligned himself with. You know, Tom, there's a lot that goes into this toxic cocktail. Uh, you know, you start out with gullible people or a person like Paul, who I guess ultimately turns out to be completely unscrupulous. Um, you know, you start out with 30 years of uh, right-wing propaganda uh, from Fox News and right-wing radio that, you know, turns these people's mind into mush until they become just a bunch of zombies. And then you put people like Paul in there, which, you know, I, my assessment of him is his whole life he's had this deep-seated idea to be an important person. You know, he's got a mm -hmm. fragile ego, and to be honest with you, he's also not that bright. Okay, so, mm -hmm. you know, all of this kind of plays in your mind, and Paul's the sort of person who can talk himself into any lie, it's, and it just always happens to work out for Paul, Tom. It's always the the lie and, and Paul's interests are always marching hand in hand. And, so and, what's, and then he, you just go ahead. Well, I, yeah, we, we have about two and a half minutes here, uh, David, before we're going to hit a break. And I, I, I'm wondering what how how solid is Paul's hold on the fourth district of Arizona? Um, how likely is there to be a challenge to him? Um, what kind of political power does he hold and how fragile is it? It's very unlikely to lose his seat because, you know, you've got a bunch of people. I mean, it's one of the reddest districts in the country, just like uh, Wyoming is, which is where I live. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I have a path forward to exclude these people. It's just going to take some political will, and it involves the 14th Amendment. But it's a reading of the 14th Amendment that I think people should hear because I'm not hearing it anywhere. And as Go a criminal it. defense attorney, Tom, um, you know, if you want to be effective in, in that role, you've got to learn to be fairly creative, uh, plausibly creative about how you read laws and case law and all this sort of thing. So, I mean, I could throw it out there. It'd take a couple minutes, but, you know, you know, I appreciate if you could uh, get me in um in touch with Ro Khanna or Mark Pocan or any of these people so I could run this by him because I think the worst thing that I, could I'd be glad here, to and, and and Sean Sean can connect us all but but David we're talking with David Gozar uh, and we have just a minute left the 14th amendment w was passed after the Civil War basically what it says is that anybody who's committed insurrection against the United States unless you know certain criteria are met may not serve in government and this was to keep the traitors, you know, the Confederate traitors out. Are you suggesting that that provision of the 14th Amendment should be used against your brother and his colleagues who have been promoting this uh, big lie of Donald Trump's? Absolutely, Tom, because I think the worst thing that can happen here is that the, the only people that suffer are the casting call from the movie Deliverance. And the people who right. organize it and set these people on Congress uh, walk away skate uh, scot free because you know. So, so this, where would that start? Where where would a Fourteenth Amendment challenge start? Would that have to be done in the courts by by an individual or by Congress? How, how does that happen? No, Tom. It's it's a clearly an exercise of raw power here. You and 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 it's important that you focus on the terminology. Don't call it that they're being expelled from Congress. Uh, consider it that they're forfeiting their right. And mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi being in charge of the House could just say they forfeited their right. They have no right to be here. They could then go to the courts and try to get their way back in. You know, it takes two thirds right. for them to get back in of a congressional vote. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could it. spell it out in yeah. greater detail, but it's possible. David, we're, we're out of time. Thank you so much for dropping by. It's great talking with you.